Good evening, viewers, and welcome to another episode of Coca-Cola Sports Scene. I'm your host, Godwin Aki. It's been a very busy week of sports. Hope you've enjoyed your weekend because I have. But first, before I let you know what's coming up on the show for you tonight, let's take a look at the sporting briefs of the week. Now let's take a look at what's coming up on the program. Coming up tonight, we have the SPP and Hunters match against the Mekai Cutters. And we catch up with one of PNG's highest profile athletes and Commonwealth Games medalist. Mankov just edging in front, but Penny having a good first 50 in the yellow cap at the top of the screen. Lane one as well. Funny, like, I keep thinking back to those times and it just it felt like it went so fast um, the whole the whole thing it's just um, but yeah I remember standing behind the block plus we have more coming up and a great show all lined up for you tonight but first let's take a look at the NCD women's soccer league competition but for these youngsters it's already game time as they took the fill anticipated to stamp their marks one talks FC yellow bibs took on the home side PNG IPAFC red bibs, who certainly were up for a challenge that worth watching. The home side was packed with brilliant young guns eagerly hoping for a sport in the upcoming under 15 80 National Youth Tournament, which will be hosted by the NCD PSSA early next month. On the other end, One talks boasted on their last year winning tag of their A division as they fought tooth for tooth right down to their last breath. Both went out scholars at half time. And some great football action there from the ladies. The weekend coming will see a friendly match between all teams, and then the week following will see the competition come into its season proper. Before we go for a quick break now, as part of Coca Cola FIFA World Cup giveaways, we have 20 Coca Cola backpacks to give away. Now all you have to do is text FIFA to 1661 or 1661 for a chance to win yourself some great prizes. It's only 49th per text, so if you keep watching Sports Scene exclusive on MTV, who knows you might be the lucky winner. Now coming up next, we have the wrap up of SP Hunters, so stick around. Welcome back. Now, if you've just tuned in, you're watching Coca Cola Sports Scene. The SPPNG Hunters narrowly went down to Mekai Cutters in round 16 of the Interest Super Cup campaign played over the weekend. The Cutters interrupted the Hunters' winning streak with an undisputed 22 4 win, while the Hunters' fighting spirit were left high and dry to several injuries. The Interest Super Cup Round 16 welcomed back the two teams that met in Round 2 games. The Hunters were superb, thereon with Amphetic 24-16 could not ask for more, as the Cutters with the last year's Champions tag remained hard beats. But this time it was the Mackay Cutters that toted the uninterrupted winning streaks of the SPPNG Hunters, with an undisputed scoreline that called for a Marum Scout side to recoup and fight back. They've got a really lead from the front. PNG as we know are a physical side. but the Despite drizzling weather, the two competition leaders were out for a season battle that went scoreless in a quarter of the half. He is an absolute man mountain, as Ucioni. He scored one try so far this year. The Hunters were the real deal, hoping to give the title holders a real shake-up, but were unfortunate to lose speed machine Gary Law to an injury, followed by second rower Sebastian Pandia to a knee injury. Sebastian Pandia, who has come back into the side, 
The Mackey Cutters boasted on their 18-16 win against winner Manly Seagulls last weekend were capable of a repeat upset as winger Liam Taylor bagged a try in the corner. The Ante struggled to bounce back, but Carter's constant pressure showed them clinched a second from Uka Anthony Mitchell, leading at 10 points to nil at half time. In the, and the determined tourists welcomed back Adex Vera to fullback, but were dismayed to see Wartogo Puara Jr. join the injury queue. The Cutters continued their good performance as they capitalized on poor ball security by the tourists to score a third in the corner. Taylor, Taylor's there, and Taylor scores his second try of the evening. Manage line, three tackles gone. Roger Larkin shows it. Now the uh, big pass out to Israel Eliab. Surely they've got a score here. Adex Weir is close. No, great defence by the Cutters. And brilliant over the top. Chris Kesh diving for the line now. Can't get it down, or does he get it down now, Georgie Benson? I think he's going to award it. The Antis late comeback through George Benson was not enough as Curtis Mitchell's try under the post brought them to victory with 20 points to 4. The Antis now will have to speed up recovery before welcoming the East Tigers to their graveyard next weekend. To get us underway. SP Hunters and Mackay Cutters there. Business Sports Parade is finally undergoing redevelopment. It is one of the major sporting grounds that will host the 2015 Pacific Games. This sporting ground will accommodate more than five different sporting codes, including lawn ball. The unveiling ceremony of the work began today. Lauren Genea with more on this story. While the Port Moresby Netball Association will be heading into their semi-finals this coming weekend, Richard Flynn Courts will no longer be what it is. Today was the official groundbreaking of the Rita Flynn Netball Courts. Minister for Sports and National Planning, Justin Chichenko, justified that the delay in the process was unfortunately beyond him and the Games Authority's control. So I'm so glad to uh, announce and be here for the groundbreaking. Uh, China Jiangsu, you have a massive task ahead. It's not your fault that this contract has been awarded uh, about eight or nine months late, but they've, they've come up to the mark and they said that they can do it uh, over the next 12 months and get it ready for uh, our um, Pacific Games. So the chairman, Costas Constantino, and Andrew Potter and Mount Donald and all of us and me as your minister, Look forward in working with you, assisting you to ensure that uh, we can get these redefling courts finished on time for netball and have a fantastic netball facility for our women here in PNG. This 54 million Kina project will construct a state of the art facility which will include an indoor theatre with three internationally certified courts. Mr. Chichenko believes this massive infrastructure development will take netball to all new heights. Uh, which is the biggest in this Bassini Parade precinct that will be put into netball for all the ladies of Papua New Guinea. So it's a massive infrastructure development and a massive import by this government for netball. And that's very, very important. So we look forward in working with you. Chairman of the Pacific Games, Costas Constantino, Chairman for Sports Foundation, Graham Osborne, and President for Pacific Games, Sir John Dewanikura, were amongst distinguished guests at the ceremony. While PNG Netball is bound to expect bigger and better things in the coming months, POM NA remains uncertain of where their competition will be staged in the near future. And there you have it. Now coming up after the break, we have an exclusive interview with PNG swimming sensation, Brian Kinney.
Welcome back. Great to have your company on the show. Now we were lucky enough to get PNG Swimming Engine Ryan Finney to the studio to get his story on his training, his past recent events and his preparations towards the upcoming events. Plus we really want to know about his day-to-day -day life. I'm sure we all have one. Now let's take a look. I got into swimming based on um, yeah, my parents, well my dad in particular, he used to be a bit of a swimmer when he was younger. Um, he actually represented Papua New Guinea back in, um, in one of the Pacific Games. So um, yeah, it was kind of a bit of a natural thing for me to jump into and uh, my brothers also used to swim so you know, as soon as they were going to training I used to go down to the pool and just um, have a bit of fun and then started getting into trainings and, and have a bit of fun. But, yeah, looking into the future, it was very difficult to see how far that could go. You know, to Olympics and Commonwealth Games. It's sort of a, uh, it's a, that's a big dream, and um, to think that it was ever possible was was pretty difficult to imagine. But you know, with um, all the right support that we've had, we've been able to get that happening. And and now a lot of the younger kids are taking advantage of that and getting trips overseas, um, great, great experience to all these um, competitions, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, um, it's, a, uh, it's really hard to explain because it's such a, um, a big part of my life that I'll never forget. Um, swimming with the PNG flag on my cap, um, walking out uh, proud wearing the PNG uniform, um, you know, I was, I was born here, lived here all my life, so um, you know, Papua New Guinea's home. And every time I do step out, it's you know, representing the country. So you try and pose yourself as best you can, so that when people are looking at you, they can see the country that you represent. Um, and that's what you try and do when you when you go overseas. So it's a big part of my life. And every day that I step outside, I get reminded of it. And it's pretty awesome. Um, I know your dad, you know, motivated you because he was a swimmer and you followed his footsteps. Um, how does she motivate you in terms of your swimming and your training? Is she always behind your back and, you know, um, just being that mentor for you and um, as your partner? Yeah. Uh, Carly's been a big part of my swimming career, particularly in the last couple of years where um, she comes, she tries to follow me as, as far as she can. You know, it, sometimes it's quite expensive, so, uh, but yeah, she'll come out and, and support me, whether it's at Commonwealth Games or World Championships. Um, yeah, she, she's there helping me and, um, you know, try, training gets very tough and she's often there sort of enforcing my training and, and if I feel like sleeping in, she, she nudges me and, and gets me up because, um, you know, otherwise I'll, I'll which one is try and sleep in but um, yeah she she gets me into it and and does all the right things and she's also a big part of the PNG swimming up here and just trying to get try and help um, the situation for the Pacific Games so yeah, there's a lot of build up towards it and she's all a part of it. Your mother I know you've accepted the award but just tell us very quickly how much would this mean to her? Look it means a whole lot to her it's for somebody that works in the background of the sport to be awarded something like this in a public space it's they don't often have that opportunity tell us about um, the recent events that you've you've participated in and how did that go for you yeah it was great we went down to um, Auckland for the Oceania Championships and um, we had uh, 18 swimmers um, swimming and I was um, listed down as assistant coach to go but um, also swam in a few relays yes. so <laughs> yeah the whole the whole idea with the relays was that um, it was sort of less invasive. I could race, but it wasn't going to be sort of too, um, I don't know, too important. So, um, you know, the pressure wasn't there. And I um, actually did some really good times I'm, I'm quite proud of. And, um, you know, they're sort of looking at the moment around the gold, silver medal times for Pacific Games. And, you know, that's, uh, that's only with um, just a little bit of training that I've done at the moment where, you know, now we're looking at about 12 months out. I'm going to start to shift that um, my program up a little bit to, you know, instead of doing four swimming sessions a week, I'll look at getting to six or seven. So it's going to beef up. But yeah, back to the um, the competition. Yeah, it was it was very successful, and yeah, for myself and for the other younger kids that went along, for a lot of them, it's a it was quite a big competition. Any personal records broken? Or? Yeah, there were a few records actually broken. Um, 
uh, not just records, but um, personal best times as well, which is probably more important for those kids, where we're trying to get them into these events for the Pacific Games. So, um, and it was a great competition because um, you know racing against Australia and New Zealand. So you have that. Yeah. You have the higher profile swimmers there, but also a chance to swim in A and B finals. So, you know, most of them got a chance to swim uh, their events twice in the morning and then at night. So it's a good opportunity for them to learn really about uh, their racing. You know, they can take something back every day from what they did. And yeah, it was really good. So um, yeah, all the swimmers sound really great and just looking for future competitions. Um, I know there's like swimming in general just in Papua New Guinea, um, yeah, overall. Yeah, um, swimming in, in Papua New Guinea at the moment is is strong. There's uh, a lot of young kids coming through. I know I completely understand how there are so many good swimmers around on coastal areas. Mm. Um, swimming is, unfortunately swimming is one of those things where a facility is right. is extremely important. Um, and here, um, it's just they're very, very hard to come by. Um, not only that, there's a lot of risk to do with swimming, um, insurance-wise. Uh, if you have a facility, it has to be all checked out, and every swimmer needs to be insured. Um, not just the swimmer, but the coach as well, because if anything happens, which it can, uh, you're dealing with water True. and people that are trying to learn to swim. So it's it's very difficult. I would love more than anything for the whole of Papua New Guinea to have access to a pool or to a swimming coach or learn to swim coach. But um, yeah, it is difficult on that side of things. My advice is if you have a dream to propel in a sport or whatever future you may have, um, yeah, you go grab it with both of your hands. But Penny having a good first 50 in the yellow cap at the top of the screen. Lane one as well, Bartok going very nicely. Let's see who turns first. It's two and one, so. PNG swimming sensation there, Ryan Kinney. We wish him all the best in his preparation and his future. We'll go for a quick break, so stay tuned. Welcome back. The PNG Football Association selected its Tepi men's squad for the Pacific Games. Let's take a look. Both Hikari keepers Ishmael Pole and Leslie Kalai have made the squad along with impressive shortstop Ronald Warrison. Gigira Laitepo Morabe and Hikari dominate the backline with three players each while Jafet Tiempo and Age Moses round off the numbers from Lei FC. Neil Hans, Eric Komang, Nigel Dabinyaba and captain David Muta will form a formidable midfield having played together for Hikari for much of the 2014 campaign and their experiences in the recent OFC Champions League. While versatile midfielders Basil Jafari, Patrick Isa and Rodney Mobiha, all from Eastern Stars, bring out the youth. Gigera Latepo Morobes, Eluda Fugre and the fleet-footed Hanson Topio have earned places in the squad after impressive performances while Michael Foster is the only member of Admiralty to have made it. Leana Geno is the only midfielder from Oro FC to have a call. The front line is formidable, with Raymond Gunemba, Kemma Jack and Jamal Sito the headliners, while Oro captain Gary Mocha makes a return to the national team, having scored nine goals for the country previously. Tommy Sammy makes a senior call-up after good performances for youth team Best FC, and Alwyn Comalong is the only overseas-based player named. The most talked about sport in the world, and you know what it is, the FIFA World Cup hosted by Brazil and is watched by millions of soccer fans and enthusiasts. Here's an update on the game so far. Four days of matches have been played so far with Brazil opening the tournament on day one with a 3-1 win over Croatia. Mexico and Chile both had narrow wins while defending world champions Spain were thrashed by rampant Netherlands. 
Colombia and the Ivory Coast had to fight hard against Greece and Japan respectively with Group D was thrown wide open after Costa Rica defeated Uruguay and a class Italy won their match against a gallant England team. Switzerland had another low scoring affair with Ecuador while France and Argentina were convincing victors. These results placed the World Cup in a far more open mood than ever. Brazil as expected top Group A, the Netherlands and Chile are in the top two in Group B, Colombia narrowly leading Group C, Costa Rica are surprise leaders in Group D and France are ahead in Group E. The next matches to be played will see Iran take on Nigeria, Ghana up against a strongly supported US team and Cristiano Ronaldo will captain Portugal against Germany. FIFA World Cup there. Well, we've come to the end of our show. Thanks for your company. If you have any sports-related stories or feature stories and would like us to cover it for you, please send us an email to sportsin at mtv.com.pg. Check us out on Facebook and find all our latest sporting updates. As always, please buy our PNG-made Coca-Cola drink every time you purchase one. I'm Godwin Eki. Good night.